There is much lore and tell about a land thought long bygone, and most tales are so far askew as to make its true existence no more than fairy stories and myth. But the documents that hold the true accounts are coveted with great reverence and secrecy, and in these scrolls lie the stories of truth regarding such a land called Avare and those who dwell therein. These chronicles are called Avaron Thestra. She loved the smell of books, especially old ones, and she loved the feel of smooth parchment beneath her fingers. She loved the creak of old binding. She even loved the tiny book beetles that made their home in the creases between book leaves. These tomes were her dearest and only friends, and she was fine with that. They took her away with them, whether it be a captivating adventure story, or simply a volume on the anatomy of elves and air elk. She loved to glean. She had taught herself two languages just by reading and comparing scrawled characters. She knew and understood the politics of fairies. She could name any insect and describe its lifestyle. She knew from books how to sew and cook and mend stone, how to carve and how to polish. She knew seven different ways to tell time without a sundial, day or night. She knew how to craft complex, time-consuming and difficult potions her parents had never dreamed of making. And she kept all this knowledge to herself as her secret companion. I write this book for the greater general knowledge. I have enchanted it to be readable by any who hunger for its wisdom, and would use it only for good purposes. Within are important facts about the magical world, incremental instructions to fulfill all the spells, incantations, and magical techniques which I know to the current date. Any with a magical bloodline will find use in all of it. Sarah Ray took one last look at the farmhouse, and at the sleeping little kern. She decided that she would miss this place, but not immediately. Too much lay in store, and she had tarried long enough. Let it be known that whoever looks upon my manuscript with the intention of harm or unwillful manipulation, he shall comprehend not one word. Should one begin his journey with good intentions but fall prey to darker measures, the words will cease to be legible, and his memory of it wiped clean. And thus they began their journey. He was what Fokin called a puma, though he was no sort of puma we see on earth. He had two long, sabre teeth and a set of large, long ears like a rabbit's. These weren't short though, like a rabbit's are in relation to his body. These ears almost reached his flanks as they were folded back. At the end of the puma's tail, there was a silky brush of long, white hair. He had no real mane to speak of, but his fur was fluffy and white under his chin and upon his breast. The rest of his body was covered in short, soft, golden fur. He had lain facing away from her, so she saw his spine clearly outlined through his hide. I never told you, and it never came up. Now I remember little or nothing of my life before I met you. I have tried just about everything to bring it back, and have only had glimpses, flashes of pictures. I don't think I was always as you know me. I don't know what I was. He watched. He watched far and he watched long. He watched with bitterness in his blackened psyche and hated. He hated, but he hated thoughtfully. He was clever, and his cleverness had a razor's edge and a needle's point. He played out scenarios in his mind and on the walls of his icy abode. He planned, and above all, he sought. One item which had evaded his far gaze for decades, and perhaps even centuries. Time twists and warps in the writhing tendrils of the ether. It stretches to the horizon and forever beyond it. So, it is hard for us to see, hard for even him to see exactly how long he has walked the skin of Avare. They attempt to lass. All your protective spells won't keep your precious learnings from me. I will hack through them like an axe through corkwood.